cousin. What's up, darling? Ha! Oh! 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 Let me see, Ken. Show us what you've got, Ken. Let me see what you... Oh, Ken. How beautiful. <laughs> well, it was the video clip that got everyone crying. Okay. Uh, it's been watched by more than four million people in one day. Yeah. Uh, Kia, I want to come to you first before we go back to Ken. He was just telling the most riveting account <laughs> of his life in World War II. I mean, it's just extraordinary. As he kept talking, I think the whole country was just going, this is unbelievable. <laughs> What was most unbelievable to me was he was 17 years old. Same age as... When he went to war, the same age as you. You're now on the front line of this coronavirus war. <laughs> the man next to you was on the front line in World War II. What did you make of that when you heard he was just 17 and did all that stuff? I think it's amazing <laughs> to even think about it, like, to think about... Like nowadays, doing that is mental. I don't. I, you just can't imagine it, can you? Especially with people nowadays as well. Yeah. Well, it's... you've made your. You know, you've made some sacrifices of your of your own, Kia. I mean, you've we've talked to you about the fact that, you know, you've had to move out of your family home, in order to move into the care home, in order to look after, um, th those people where you are. I mean, you know, the, the things that you're doing at 17 are incredibly thoughtful mm. and mature, and it is described as a war, of course, this war against this virus. Ken, one of the questions that yeah. um, we wanted you to, to, to help us with is how everybody deals with what they're dealing with right now. We're going through an incredibly hard time. You have clearly described the extraordinary challenges that you face, the courage and heroism that you showed, and you have experienced loss yourself. You're sitting there with the gift that you were given of, you know, the, with the picture of your wife, Ada, married for 70 years, and you lost her <laughs> in August. What advice, what inspiration can you give to everybody as we go through this national struggle? Well, I think it's terrible when you hear about all what they give to the NHS, but unfortunately, it's not sufficient. Mm. The, to me, the government are lacking in lots of ways. They're saying things and they're not providing them. And I think it's disgusting. And the poor carers in all the homes they do work so hard. Before I came in here, I had a carer, and she used to start at 8 in the morning and work till half past 10 at night. But she had the odd break in the middle of the time for a short while. But the work she put in was so dedicated. And then I came here to this lovely home where they are, every one of them, Marvellous. They're so caring. They don't see you wanting for anything. And we hear of all these people dying through the virus. And unfortunately, they've been doing their best to protect the ones from getting it. And yet they get it, the virus themselves, and they die. I think it's a shame. And Ken, and Ken, you've so got everyone. You're going to get everyone crying again now, because I can see on my Twitter feed everyone's crying. <laughs> you're making everybody cry. I just want to ask you one thing. The reason we're all so emotional about what your story is just this extraordinary love you had for your wife, Ada. When when did you meet Ada? How old were you, and where did oh. you meet her? I came out of the navy. Uh, first of all, I, I came out of the Navy uh, about September 1946 and I couldn't settle in Oswestry where I lived, so I re-entered in the Navy under the bounty scheme where you got £90 to sign on for three years. <laughs> but I didn't, at the end, I didn't fancy doing that, so I left. 
And I went back home to Oswestry, Street and my aunt was there and said, why can't you settle, Ken? <laughs> I said, well, I can't get a job, proper job. Uh, there's no entertainment here. But I had passed out in the Navy as a seaman torpedo man, which made me an electrician. I was a qualified electrician in civil life. But there was no entertainment, so I went to Liverpool to live with my aunt. And within a week, I went dancing. I used to go dancing every night. And I met my wife. I can still see that post <laughs> she was leaning on with her friend. <laughs> and I met my wife, and we started courting. Gorgeous wife. Oh, she was beautiful <laughs> and lovely in every way. We courted for two months, and my cousin, who had been in the commandos, and he was taking prisoners in Dieppe. He and his wife were getting married, well, him and his girlfriend were getting married, and she said to me, Ken, I have the chance of two flats here in Liverpool. If you would like one, you can have one. Well, we hadn't really thought of getting married. <laughs> we weren't engaged. So, <laughs> so we had to wait three weeks for our bands to be read in the church, and we rented this flat. We went to Oswester for a honeymoon, <laughs> came back three days later, and we had a lot of goodies, the war just finishing, <laughs> ham and eggs and all kinds of things. And how did you propose and marriage, Ken? we stopped Ken? at the flat. To... <laughs> how? <laughs> well, at a dance. <laughs> really? Oh, we, we were always dancing. I used to fling it over my shoulder and between my <laughs> legs, and we used to jitter back. <laughs> it was lovely. And you, and you asked her to, tiny, you asked her to marry she? you at yes. a dance, Ken? Uh, I, um, I'm just trying to think that one out. Where, um, yes, I think I did ask her to marry. We were so close to each other and we were made for each other. Yeah. But uh, I'm sure I asked her to dance. Well, Ken... And we got um, married on the 27th of November. Fantastic. You know, I could talk uh, yeah, to you all day. I do a show called Life Stories. Yes. Your life story is more interesting already <laughs> in 20 minutes <laughs> than anything I've ever done with any celebrity ever. <laughs> I might actually have to do a, a non-celebrity <laughs> yes. life stories. Let's get Captain that... Captain Moore... You get a load yeah, of proper, proper British heroes. Yeah. 90 year old Margaret Payne. I think there'll be so many great from people Scotland. to talk to. Uh, we've got to leave it there. Ken uh, and Kia, we're supposed to be doing a five minute interview. Thanks. It's been 20, 20 minutes. Uh, thank you to everyone at Thistleton Lodge. <laughs> yeah. thank, thank you, you very Kia, much. for all the caring that you're doing. And Ken, yes. thank, you, thank you for moving the country <laughs> and showing us the power of true love because yes. it's incredibly touching. So thank you both I'm for joining I'm very us. happy. You I'm very, belt, yes. Belt. I'm very happy at this little dinner. <laughs> show, show, <laughs> show us your cushion. Show us your cushion one more time, Ken. <laughs> Let's see the cushion, cushion again. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there it is. Fantastic. <laughs> there we are. Fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. Ken, you've got the Thank whole you. country in pieces this morning. We are beside ourselves talking to you, listening to you. I think I've cried about three times during that interview <laughs> while you've been on Fabulous. air. Thank you for your service to this country. And Kia, you know what? It's remarkable that at 17 you are doing what you're doing yeah. as well. And a shout out as well to a hello to your grandparents. I know you're um, you know, you've moved into the care home, moved <laughs> yeah. out of their house, but I know that they're Brilliant. fans of the programme. Thank so. you both for joining us and, Hello, and moving my, the whole country. We nan. greatly appreciate it. My, my, you my nan much. loves you, Piers Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I want to hear she, more of this. She'll be watching you now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not, what's she, her name? Um, she says she's called Linda. Yeah. Well, Linda, if you're watching... Uh, and is... um, I, FaceTime, I FaceTimed her last night and said uh, Piers retweeted our tweet and she said, Oh, he's my hero. I love <laughs> Piers. He's always so right in what he says. <laughs>